for all of you. I didn't come here with an eloquent speech. I stand here with fear and trembling, knowing that I am accountable to God, to every word that I'm going to say. And I'm not standing here just to prove that I'm better than you. No, please don't think of that. It's not by my might, nor by my power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. He gives me grace to do what he wants me to do. He gave me grace to put this sermon together and prayerfully ask God that this is his word for us today. And so, um, yeah, I just want to thank you all for allowing me to share the word of God today. So if you have your Bible with you, please take it. Um, let's open it. Open it with me in John chapter 3. And let's read verse 1 to verse 15. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. The title of our message today is, You Must Be Born Again. Let's say it again. You must be born again. Let's pray and let's ask God to help us this morning. God the Father, creator of all things, true source of light and wisdom. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. And as we think of these things, open our hearts and our minds to hear you. Help us to understand what does it mean of being born again. Today, Lord, I pray that you help me as I speak your word. Fill me with the same grace, anointing, and power so that I can preach your word boldly and with authority for the deliverance of those under the bondages of sin. I am unworthy, Lord, but make me worthy by cleansing me and filling me with your Holy Spirit. 
Let your Holy Spirit take full control of me and let him speak, not me. So in this passages of scripture, sorry, Jesus is pretty clear when he says, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so Jesus is telling us that we must be born again. Pastor Steve, I was born and raised Catholic, believing in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I heard this story, but I never knew what does it mean to be born again. And to be honest, Pastor Ted, even when I decided to be Christian and had water baptized in 2008, I still don't know what does it mean of being born again. And Pastor Wally, sadly, even when I started attending Crossroad, I still didn't know if I have been born again. I thought I knew Jesus already, but there's so much more about him that I do not know. But Pastor Dolu, I thank God. I remember that day when I decided to totally surrender my life to Jesus, the Spirit of God made me born again. And I got baptized by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God who is in me revealed his word and helped me understand what does it mean to be born again. So I wonder how many of you will agree with me that there are so many Christians who call themselves Christians but have not been born again. Or some of you have thought a long time about Christianity, but you are unsure. You are unsure if you have been born again. Many claim to be Christians but have never been walking with God. It shows how they talk and how they live their lives. Never act like a born-again Christian. And you know what, Ron? I feel compassion for them. Some Christians claim to know Jesus, but they are far from him. I do not know if they have relationship with him. They keep saying they know Jesus. And they say they accept him as their Lord and Savior. But I wonder if Jesus knows them. Are they going to enter the kingdom of God? Jesus said in Matthew 7, chapter 23 to 20, 21 to 23, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does he will, the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will, decla then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of flawlessness. We see some Christian claim to be Christian and we see them, how they live their life. And they say, we know Jesus already. We accept him already as our Lord and Savior. But can I tell you this? 
We can pretend and lie to people, but we cannot lie to God. God sees our heart. He knows our ways. He knows our thoughts. He knows everything about us. He is the omniscient God. He's everywhere. He knows everything. So now let's go back to the text and let's read again verse 1 to verse 8 and see how the story of Jesus and Nicodemus encountered applies to us today. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do the sign that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So in this story, we saw that Nicodemus visit Jesus at night. Why night? It didn't say here, but I assume Nicodemus does not want people to see him talking. So who is Nicodemus? He was a Jewish leader. He was also a member of, San, of the Sanhedrin, the high court in Israel. He is one of the Pharisees. The name Pharisee means separated one. The Pharisees separated themselves from society to study and teach the law. They also separated themselves from the ordinary people because they considered them religiously unclean. Nicodemus believed that you could be righteous before God by your works, by keeping law. He thinks that when you do good to others and you don't harming them, you're just minding your own business, or you have been serving in the church, or you're just simply being a good person, that you could be righteous before God. The Pharisee also recognized himself as a righteous by teaching and keeping the law. You know, the law that God gave to Moses, like you honor your father and mother, you don't murder, you don't commit adultery, you don't steal, you don't bear false witness against your neighbor, you don't covet your neighbor's, neighbor's house, and so on. And so they think by doing that, they can be so-called righteous before God. I would say that the Pharisees cared more about outward religious form than genuine faith. So Nicodemus actually is just like us. He believes in God. We believe in God. He believes in Scripture. We believe in Scripture. He, we worship. He worshiped God, the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. He attended church faithfully. He prays. He read the Bible, and he tithed. Nicodemus is no different than us, Karen, Sister Karen. And so here in verse 2, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do this sign that you do unless God is with him. We notice that Nicodemus was not asking a question here. He's not asking Jesus a question, but Jesus knows his heart already. He knows already what's in Nicodemus' heart. But I think Nicodemus believed in Jesus. He addressed Jesus as rabbi, and rabbi means great one, master, or teacher. He came to Jesus and recognized that Jesus must be from God. For no one can do these miracles unless God is with him. Nicodemus acknowledged that Jesus has a sign of a true man of God. Verse 3, we, let's see, verse 3, we see that even though Nicodemus is not asking a question, yeah, I already mentioned that Jesus knew what's in his heart and thoughts. And so Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4 and 8, Nicodemus said to him, 
How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sounds, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born again. We see that Nicodemus seems confused here. He cannot understand what Jesus is saying to him. And so he asked him, he asked, Jesus again, how can a man be born when he is old? Actually, that was my question too. Maybe you have that question as well. How can you be born again? You're already born. How can he enter a second time in his mother's womb? Can we enter to our to our mother's womb and be born again? How is that be? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. We were born from our mother's womb. And the second birth that Jesus is talking here is a second birth that comes from above. And only God, the Holy Spirit, can do that. He's the only one who can make us and us be born again. He can make you born again. We need to be regenerated, new birth. And the word regeneration means that God brings man to new life or born again from a previous state of separation from God and subjection to the decay of death. And it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgression. It is by grace you have been saved. It is by what Jesus did on the cross that we are saved. And because of that, we, we can be alive in our spirit. God can make us alive in our spirit. Furthermore, there is the sense in which regeneration includes the concept of being born again. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from, dead, from the dead. We may also define regeneration as a secret act of God in which he imparts new spiritual life to us. So in verse 7, Jesus is telling us not to be surprised that you said to us, that he said to us, we must be born again. This is not an option. Rather, this is a must for every Christian. Jesus said, we must be born again so we could see the kingdom of God. Born again means you must be born from above, a new birth. You have the presence of God comes live inside of you, lives inside of you. You are a new creation in Christ. There must be a change in your life. You die on yourself, and you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. God got to do the changing in your life, and Jesus called that being born again. And when people that have had this experience can testify the change in their life, and I can testify from my experience, Sister Mina, I remember the day when I responded to the call of God, <laughs> the day I truly invited Jesus Christ to come into my life. 
it's a moment that I can certainly say, I know God personally. I encounter him in a supernatural way. God made me born again. And I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I can relate to Isaiah chapter 6. Woe to me, I cried. I'm ruined, for I'm a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Sister Rachel, my eyes were opened. And I see the sins in my life, like pride, gossip, jealousy, coveting, unclean words. I have no patience. It is hard for me to read the Bible and because I do not understand. I'm consumed by the busyness of the world. I barely pray and talk to Jesus. I'm telling you, Pastor Steve, I'm scared and shy to pray in public. <laughs> and I do not pray for others. I have my own prayer list. I just pray for my own self and family. I do not consider other people's feelings. I don't care if I hurt them or offend them with my words or action. But you know what? You know what, Kim? When I decided to accept Jesus. When I received the gift of God and made me born again, my life has changed. And this is something that people should have. You need a transformed life encounter with God. When I got born again, I immediately experienced a freedom peace, joy that I had never known before. And that is still with me today, Pastor Ted. I look back over my life and see that although my personality may be the same as it was before, so much of my life has changed, Sister Karen. I have been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My old self is gone, and I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I have this hunger and passion for Christ, and I couldn't grasp it. I'm overwhelmed with his love, and I can help telling people how much I love Jesus and who God is. I don't care what other people say about me because I care more about what God will say. And that I know, Pastor Wally, I am born again. So how do you know if you're born again? How do you know if you had experience a new birth or regeneration? Number one, your desires change. You no longer crave the things this world values. Instead, you desire, your desire is to live for God's glory and his pleasure. You long to please God and to demonstrate your love for him by obeying his commands and doing the works he created you to do. You desire to honor him in thoughts, words, and deeds, and to make him known to others who also are in need of peace, joy, love, and freedom, that only he can provide. Seeking God and his kingdom and walking by his spirit becomes your priority instead of living to satisfy the desire of your flesh. Second is your vision change. 
Your eyes become fixed upon what is unseen rather than upon what is seen. Or in other words, upon what is eternal rather than temporal. You gain a God views versus man views of the world, which provides you with revelation, understanding, and wisdom. You look at people and situation through the lens of scripture, no longer focusing on your attention upon outward appearance, but instead looking at the heart of people. You realize that God can be trusted with your personal life as well as the world situation because you see God ruling and reigning over all of the earth. Third is your mind change. You are given a new mind, the mind of Christ. Your mind is renewed as you read his word that reveals his character and his ways and enables you to discern what is good, pleasing, perfect will of God. Instead of the rebellious self-focus worldly thoughts you had before knowing God, his thoughts will come before your thoughts and his ways, your ways. Number four is your heart change. You are also given a new heart. The heart is the seat of emotions. And you will feel that you will love what God's love, and you will hate what God hates. He loves the righteousness, and he gave us his commandments for our good so that we can live righteous lives that are filled with freedom from every bondage, peace, and joy. He also hates what is evil which is rebellion against his perfect will because he knows rebellion, which is always leads to death and destruction. And he is the giver and sustainer of life. If you notice, I put the scripture verses there. And I, I don't know if I should still read it, but it's all in the PowerPoint. God loves all his creation. And as your heart becomes more and more like his heart, you too will love others as Christ loves you. As Christ has loved you, even those who persecute you and are your enemies. Number five, your words change. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So since you gain a new heart when you're born again, what comes out of your mouth changes too. Blessings rather than curses will pour forth from your mouth. You will sing praises to God and offer up prayers to him and for his people. Rivers of living water, wise and just words will pour forth from your mouth that will be a foundation of life to others. Number six, your hearing changes. You will have ears to hear and know the voice of Jesus, your shepherd who will protect, lead, and guide you into path of righteousness for his name's sake. You will hear the convicting as well as comforting and encouraging voice of the Holy Spirit who will lead you into all the truth. Yes, Jesus. You will be able to hear the voice of the Father as he pronounces his word of love over you. Number seven, 
your family and friendships change. You are born into a new family, the family of God, made up of other believers in Jesus from every tongue, tribe, and nation from all over the world and throughout this history. I'm so blessed to be part of Crossroad. We have different tongues here, different nation, and we become family. You know, I, it's, so, it's so amazing how we could all have in unity because we believe in one God. We believe in Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean you are to discard your family or origin, but that you have also been given the gift of a new family who shares your love for the Lord, something your family or origin may or may not share. Because Pastor Ted, not everyone will believe what we believe. No one will agree with what we agree. Who can come alongside you and encourage you to grow in knowledge, understanding, and love for the Lord? It is important, Matea, that you surround yourself with fellow believers who can spur you on to love and do good deeds. And who can encourage you, especially as you see the day of Christ returning See the day of Christ's return approaching. And in addition, although you will pray for and share the gospel with former friends who are living in rebellion towards God, you will limit your interaction with them in order to be careful not to do as they do, knowing that bad company ruins good morals. And number eight, your actions and attitude change. Your actions and attitudes change. You will bring forth the fruit that is keeping with your repentance. You will be a doer of the word who proves that your faith is indeed alive. It will become apparent that it is no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives in you by faith. And that he empowers you to do the will of the Father, even when your flesh doesn't feel like obeying God. Yes. You know, my flesh doesn't want to really go to the Bible college. <laughs> I'm telling you that. When my flesh is telling me, Marianne, you can't go to Bible college. You just lost your house. You don't have a job. Ron doesn't have a job. Pretty much, you have nothing. <laughs> Pretty much, how can you go to Bible college? You go, you're old already. English is second language. You have a mother of three. You have to think of that. And my flesh said, yeah, I don't want to go. My flesh doesn't want. But you know what? Because the Spirit of God lives in me, I can't, I can't say no to God anymore. <laughs> it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And whatever I do right now, I do it for the glory of the Lord. It's not easy, but God is with us. He's always with us. He will enable us to do what he wants us to do. So you will bear the fruit of the Spirit that is at work and living inside you. You know, the fruits of the Spirit where we are actually talking about that in a children ministry the nine fruit of the spirit love joy peace kindness faithfulness goodness oh wow faithfulness goodness self-control i'm missing one yeah <laughs> love joy peace kindness 
patience, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, meekness, gentleness. Oh, I'm sorry, children. I, we, we, this is our, <laughs> this is what we're uh, teaching you for this. Too, but, um, you know, oh, you know that fruit of the Spirit. And as we grow closer to Jesus, it will also grow in us, those fruit of the Spirit. If, if before we can't love, we can be kind, or we have like little patience, but as we grow closer to Jesus, as we, as we accept him, he will help us to have those fruit of the Spirit. Amen. <laughs> so you will operate his joy, love, patience, peace, kindness, goodness. Actually, it's actually here. <laughs> Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. You, there you go. <laughs> yeah, someone's happy. <laughs> and then once you have those, then you will help those who are in need. You will be able to help them and show them what, is, what it is to have those fruit of the Spirit. So in general, you will offer your body as a living sacrifice in imitation of Christ who offer up his life for your sake. So now you will say, Pastor Steve, I'm ready to, to serve. I will offer my life to serve and to be um, a mouth of God, to go and share the gospel to those who do not know the gospel. So even in the face of death, you can have peace. So even in the face of death, you can have peace. Knowing that the same spirit that overcame death is alive in you. And therefore, death has lost its sting and has been swallowed up in a victory. You're not going to be afraid to die because you know, I know it's scary, right? <laughs> it's not easy. But you know, when the Spirit of God lives in you, you will have that peace. To die is a gain. Is it right? <laughs> you will have that peace knowing that God is waiting for you. That you'll be meeting up with Christ when the time calls you home. So only God, the Holy Spirit, can make you and I be born again. But Sister Rachel, we need to surrender our life to Jesus. We need to humble ourselves and acknowledge the sins in our life. We need to repent and ask him to help us change. We cannot do this on our own. <laughs> if you say, okay, tomorrow I'll be kind, I'll be, okay, I'll be good, I will not do this anymore. But you know what? We can't do this on our own. Only by the power of the Holy Spirit, only God can change us. We cannot change And so we need to have a relationship with Jesus so he can make us born again. Because how can Jesus make you born again if you don't have that relationship? How can can um, change you if you don't allow him to change you? We need to humble ourselves. We need to spend time with him and his word Communicate with him through prayer. When you are born again, the Spirit of God lives in you and will help you live a godly life. It's not easy. But he said that the reason why Jesus left is for us so he could send the Holy Spirit to be our guide, to be our comforter. He sent to us so, so the Holy Spirit can help us 
can help us overcome temptation and sins in our lives. And you will truly experience true joy, peace, and hope that comes from Christ Jesus. So I want, you, I want to challenge you with these questions. Have you truly been born again? Are you experiencing the victorious life that Jesus promises when you entrust your life to him and allow his spirit to live through you? If not, maybe this is the time God is calling your attention. Maybe right now he's knocking on your door and you're not being born again. Again, you can be born again by confessing your sin to God and by asking him to come in and completely take over your life. I can assure you that he will be faithful to make you born again and baptize you by the Holy Spirit. If God made me born again when I surrender my life to him, he will also make you born again. All you have to do is receive the gift, accept Jesus in your life, God loves you, and he desires for you to be born again. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So if you think that God is calling you right now and you want to be born again, I encourage you to accept the call. Don't worry about what others may say or think of you. What matters is you obey God. And it is between you and him. It is between you and him. And for those of you who are already born again, Let's pray and intercede to those who have not been born again, that they will soften their heart, that they will humble their hearts to accept Jesus and to allow Jesus to change them. And so today, Pastor Steve, we're not going to do any music. We're just going to be quiet for a moment. Let's just, let's just talk to Jesus for a moment and and let's just ask him to, to speak to us today.